Cal IT Square is interested in pursuing how uh, game-based learning technologies can be brought to bear in a new generation of advanced manufacturing where future workers will potentially be wearing sensors on their body. It might be a camera, it might be augmented reality uh, type of displays, it might be uh, like Fitbits, but for the workplace. This idea of uh, smart workplaces is emerging, which is being potentially driven and enabled by computer game or virtual reality based uh, training technologies, which we're uh, investigating. If we imagine a manufacturing company, say, uh, that produces a product like uh, rolled steel, where they take big ingots of raw iron and then melt them, smelt them, and produce flat sheet spools that you sometimes see on trucks or trains, which are then gonna turn into consumer products like kitchen appliances or automobile parts kind of a thing. That workplace is a high energy workplace, meaning they use lots of electricity and lots of natural gas. This is a risky work environment, you know, like you don't want to get close to liquid metal, which is 1500 or more degrees. Part of the training is as you look for new ways to streamline and transform the efficiency uh, of these operations. For example, if you bring in green technologies or sustainable or solar technologies, the workflows may change, and thus you want to make sure that the people who you're employing can work productively and safely. Because uh, it's one thing when they've been doing a process for like 30, 40, 50 years or more, kind of that industrial age, to now something that's more computer intensive that has to be rapidly reconfigured. So that training ultimately may not so much be just the apprenticeship model, but now this idea of just-in-time training. People learn how to do something just before they actually need to know need to, to use it. How quickly can we help people learn how to perform a complex task with sophisticated technologies where there may be elements of safety that have to be addressed? So that's a different world than say what we've thought of historically as the like office automation workplace where you know we went from having people who work with paper and documents now working with documents online and what have you, which has very few safety risks to it other than having your email exposed at an errant time. There is a project that we did that I was director of that was called Fab Lab, which was done for Intel corporations. So if we have a, a Mac computer like I do, the microprocessor came from this factory in Chandler, Arizona. It's an $8 billion facility. It runs 24-7, 365. And you know, it has this whole clean room environment where you see the people wearing their bunny suits, you know, and what have you. They came to us with this problem of workforce training. Uh, when you run 24-7, 365, you go through people quickly. Uh, they're hiring adult technicians, so these are not typically college graduates. They might be somebody with a high school diploma or maybe a year or two of community college. Yet they have to learn uh, how to work with multi-million dollar equipment. So these are not the people who are designing the microprocessors. These are the people who are keeping the production system in operation. And so in our case, we took a retail computer game called Unreal Tournament 2004 in the uh, initial edition, which we bought on eBay for $9. And it came with a uh, software development kit called Unreal Ed, or now called Unreal Development Kit. And we took the commercial game, which was running around battling monsters, and converted it from being that fanciful entertainment world into now being a uh, scale model of the actual production facilities with the same type of machines 
uh, that were involved in. We employed uh, UC undergrads to help implement these kinds of things and Intel, after they saw what we had done, gave us three more research projects to do. One of the other ones we uh, worked on after this was if you have people who work in a clean room, you have to do this very ordinary activity of getting dressed. But you have to get dressed in this costume, this head-to-toe bodysuit, which is designed to keep the room clean. It's the kind of thing that to train people to actually do this properly, a correct gowning procedure, as they call it, takes 30 to 40 minutes to do per person. And you can imagine being, you know, like a new employee or an employee candidate who gets interviewed and one of the things they ask you to do is, we need you to go into this room with a bunch of strangers and put clothes on or take clothes off. Now this is not like a retail shopping experience, this is like a job. So you can already start to see, well now there's this more complex social world of personal values, privacy and what, you know. well I of course know how to get dressed, you know. And it's like, well, but this is not getting dressed, this is gowning. And so whether you put your right boot on before your left boot makes a big difference depending on how you're seated. Okay, so suddenly you have to take this thing that you've done every day of your life, but now relearn how to do it in a place where you know, now you're accountable for how well you get dressed. So to be able to make that something that it doesn't look like PowerPoint, which is how they historically train people, but at least made it something that they could see, oh, here's why you want to put this foot in before that one. And by presenting it in this game-based format, we could model and simulate literally the scouting uh, process, which, uh, by the way, Intel has over 24 patents on. So even something as mundane as getting dressed is being quite critical to operations in a high-tech environment.